questions for reflection. Notice the beautiful spontaneity and prayer of the apostles as recorded by Luke in his account of the early church in the book of the Bible called the Acts of the Apostles. They had just appeared before the council, facing hostility and danger. But what was different this time? They were. They had received the promised advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus had promised to send. And one of the obvious signs of that Holy Spirit in their midst is this intimacy with the Lord in prayer and this holy boldness. As we continue in the Easter season, we move toward the celebration of Pentecost. Our readings at Holy Mass are not chronological. The account from our first reading followed after they had received that promised outpouring. Among the readings read at the Mass on Pentecost Day is this account of that first Christian Pentecost. And I quote, When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. That's from Acts 2. There's little doubt from their actions following that event. They were totally different. They went forward and turned the entire world upside down with their preaching and the witness of their changed lives. However, in many respects, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, seems mysterious to many Christians in our own day. When I consider this reality, I'm reminded of one of the many missionary stories recounted in the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 19 of the Acts begins with these words, and I quote, While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior of the country and came down to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered him, We have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. End quote. Too often we live our lives like those disciples in Ephesus. We act as though we did not realize there even is a Holy Spirit, still at work, still pouring out gifts, still making it possible for us to bear spiritual fruit. The same Holy Spirit still changing each one of us individually and collectively into the image of Jesus Christ. The same Holy Spirit still calling us to make disciples of all the nations. Will we respond like the early believers? In our responsorial psalm for today's Mass, we are reminded that the Lord spoke prophetically through David in these words. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have fathered you. Ask of me and I shall give you the nations as your birthright. The whole wide world is your possession. With an iron scepter you will break them, shatter them like so many pots. These words were fulfilled in Jesus Christ, whose resurrection we are still celebrating. He is the promised king, the one to whom this promise applies. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Is he your king? The words of Jesus to Nicodemus are so vitally important. We must be born anew, or born from above, or yes, born again. That begins for us at baptism, where we're freed from original sin and incorporated into the body of Christ, the church. But it does not end there. Our call is to continually cooperate with grace and to grow in that newness of life. Sometimes Catholic Christians are uncomfortable with the expression born again. We shouldn't be. The Apostle Paul proclaimed in his second letter to the Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. But this becoming new is a process. This is the reason why we renew our baptismal vows during the Easter liturgies. The reason why we're encouraged to bless ourselves with the waters of baptism every time we enter into a church sanctuary. Conversion is a lifelong process. For most of us, baptized as infants, it began when our parents presented us to the priest at our baptism. But that was just the beginning. The process of being born again is to continue throughout our whole lives. 
until we pass over to the Lord in eternity. It is through the sacraments, the Word, and life in the body of Christ, the Church, that the full experience of that baptismal grace is brought to its fulfillment. Our life as Christians is meant to be lived as a continuing encounter with the Lord. The risen Jesus always comes to encounter us in prayer, words, sacrament, one another, the poor, suffering, struggle, you name it. In all of these, we can encounter Jesus, even if initially hidden, when we open our hearts to his mercy and love by living faith. This word encounter addresses ecclesiology or the theology of the church. The church is the place of encounter. It's not something, but someone, the body of the risen Jesus. Jesus is the head of his body and the head and the body can't be separated. Through our participation in the mission of the church, we participate in his continuing redemptive mission. This spirituality of encounter is a beautiful spirituality, a profound theology, a treasure for this barren age. It comes in a moment when the whole church and the world into which she is called desperately needs this spirituality of encounter more than anything else. Can we say we are experiencing this encounter with the Lord regularly? He wants us to.